This is the first part of a series of lectures on electricity. An object becomes charged if electrons are added to or removed from it. When the charged object is provided with a conducting path, such as a wire, electrons start to flow through the path. When electrons move, we say that an electric current is produced. An electric current is formed by moving electrons. Before the discovery of electrons, scientists believed that an electric current consists of positive moving charges. Although this belief was later proven wrong, this idea is still widely held. This movement of positive charges is called conventional current. An electric current is actually caused by the flow of electrons from a negatively charged terminal of the battery to a positively charged terminal of the battery. This is because electrons are repelled from the negatively charged terminal and attracted to the positively charged terminal. This movement is known as electron flow. Conventional current is opposite to electron flow. Since electric current consists of moving electric charges, we measure electric current by determining the amount of electric charge that passes through a conductor per unit time. An electric current is the rate of flow of electric charge and is measured in amperes. The equation we have is I for current is equal to the charge flowing past a point per unit time. 1 ampere is the electric current produced when 1 coulomb of charge passes through a point in a conductor in 1 second. An instrument called the ammeter is used to measure the strength of an electric current in the electric circuit. The ammeter should be connected in series to the rest of the circuit. A battery derives electrical energy from chemical reactions and it does so by creating an electric field with different electric potentials which causes charges to move in the conductor or component. This battery has to do work or supply energy to move the charges. We describe the battery in terms of how much energy or work done is required to drive a unit charge through a circuit connected to the battery. We say that the electromotive force of a source is the work done by the source in driving a unit charge around a complete circuit. Where E is the EMF of the battery, W is the work done, and Q is the amount of charge. Now the alternative unit for voltage is joules per coulomb. A voltmeter can be used to measure the EMF of the source such as a dry cell. When a dry cell is connected to a light bulb, the bulb converts the electrical energy provided by the dry cell to light and thermal energy. For each coulomb of charge passing through the light bulb, the amount of electrical energy converted to other forms of energy is called potential difference. The potential difference across a component is the work done to drive a unit charge through the component. The unit is in volts. V stands for potential difference across component, W is the work done, or energy converted to other forms, and Q is the amount of charge. A voltmeter can be used to measure the potential difference across electrical component, such as a light bulb. The definitions for EMF, or electromotive force, and potential difference may seem similar. The difference between the two is that EMF applies to sources such as batteries, whereas potential difference applies to components such as light bulb. The EMF of the battery tells us about the potential of a battery to do work and deliver electrical energy. The conversion of energy is from chemical to electrical energy, whereas potential difference tells us how much electrical energy is being used or dissipated into other forms. The diagram below shows a series connection of light bulbs on the left versus a parallel connection of light bulbs on the right. When the light bulbs are connected in series, current passes through the light bulbs one after the other. Whereas in a parallel connection of light bulbs, current splits into different branches. 
When cells are connected in series with each other and they're all connected in the same direction, the total potential difference applied to the circuit is equal to the sum of the individual potential differences. The current in the series circuit is the same at all points in the circuit. If you were to put an ammeter into a series circuit, the current is the same everywhere, no matter where you may put the ammeter. The sum of the potential difference across all the different components in the circuit is equal to the potential difference applied by the cell. In this case, the EMF of the cell is 12 volts and the potential difference 8 volts, 1 volt and 3 volts add up to give me 12 volts, which is the EMF of the battery. In the parallel circuit, the total current flowing from the cell must always be equal to the sum of the current flowing through the individual component. 0.05 amperes plus 0.015 amperes by 0.1 amperes gives you the total current flowing into the battery. In a parallel circuit, the potential difference supplied by the cell is the same potential difference as that across each component in the parallel circuit, regardless of the resistance of the component. So if the EMF of the battery is 12 volts, across each of the electrical components, they will have a potential difference of 12 volts. We can use an ammeter to measure the current through an electrical circuit component. For example, if we want to measure the current through the electrical circuit component R, we connect the ammeter in series with the resistor R so that current flows through the ammeter and then flows through the resistor R. An ideal ammeter has no resistance so that it does not lower the current in the circuit. We can use a voltmeter to measure the difference in potential between two points. If we would like to measure the potential difference across this resistor, we can connect the voltmeter in parallel to this circuit component between the two points A, B. An ideal voltmeter has infinite resistance so that no current passes through it. 